Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Prashanti. Um, okay, let's look at this as not a presentation, but as a workshop. So at the end of it, I'll be asking you guys some questions because I really need feedback and input from everyone about what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so before I start, Smiso, you said there's no way of uh, mapping ecosystem services. Have we met? <laughs> okay, anyways, um, so just to start, the background of what I'm trying to do or the, the concept of uh, this mapping uh, recreational values of protected areas uh, came about by, oh, sorry, it came, Prashanti, it's not moving. Yes, I am, down, down, up, left, right. Nah. Mm -mm. Down, left, right, enter, not entering. So uh, as we heard, in, sorry for that. Um, so we heard in the morning from the plenary speakers about, especially Lazan, who mentioned that in terms of um, decision making, management decision making, and um, allocating of funds, protected areas or conservation usually um, is at a shortfall because we, we it, when compared to when co in competition with other profitable land uses such as your mining and your agriculture, because protected areas don't really have uh, market based returns. There aren't any tradable goods per se that we get from protected areas. So because of this, when it comes to investments and funds that are put to Towards, funded, uh, towards protected areas, uh, managing protected areas and proclaiming new protected areas, usually not much money is funded into that because it's all about um, the economy and contributions to the economy. So conservation, since it doesn't have any marketable goods or returns, it's usually seen as not being as profitable as other land uses. Uh, and so what we do know, though, about protected areas is that they protect a myriad of ecosystems. These ecosystems provide us with loads of, like Usmi such as said, uh, valuable goods and services that are beneficial to the economy, to social um, development, and um, to society at large. Okay, this is weird. Sorry. It's not moving here. Okay to society at large. So it's these ecosystem services that are now, that have now become our selling points to say, no, we're not just conserving for biodiversity, conversing by, conserving biodiversity and for future generations, et cetera, et cetera. We are now conserving because there are these ecosystem goods and services that are valuable, that, are, that we need to sustain livelihoods, to, uh, that contribute to the economy. But the problem becomes, uh, again, these ecosystem services not being marketable, they're not um, tangible. For instance, if we talk about uh, regulatory or support ecosystem services such as water treatment and erosion control, like I was saying earlier, we can't really put that into a bottle and say we're selling water treatment or we're selling um, erosion control. So mm, we don't get much buy-in into that. However, if you think of, I mean, all of us, if you think of, say, Ukhashlamba, Drakensberg, or think of Ismangaliso, the first thing you think about is not water purification, it's not soil erosion um, control, but rather it is the activities and the scenery and um, the, the, the animals that you can see in these particular protected areas. And so that's not surprising then when we find that ecotourism is worth um, an estimated 65, 65 billion rands in South Africa. So it's because of this that this idea came about to say, okay, so if these protected areas or if ecotourism is worth that much in South Africa, how much is it worth to us in KZN. So how much um, are, are these protected areas that we manage at KZN Wildlife, how much are they contributing to the economy of South Africa? So, and, um, so what are these ecosystems, what are these services, and who's benefiting? So that's how the idea came about, and so we decided to use uh, three of our, yeah, it's stuck again. 
So we decided to use three of our protected areas as case studies. Help, please. Three of our protected areas as case studies um, to map uh, this recreational value of uh, ecosystem services. We used Ukatlamba Drakensberg, Maluti Drakensberg, Isuluwe Mfolozi, and Ismangaliso. So for this presentation, I'm only going to focus on Isuluwe and Is, uh, Maluti Drakensberg because that's the data that I, I received. I'm still waiting for data for, from Ismangaliso. So is it, if there's anyone in here from there, we can talk at tea time, please. So yeah, where are we? We are there, yes. So, um, so to map. Yes, recreational value. So what we find, what we know is that tourism, um, the figures of tourism are driven by these key ecosystem services. That's what we know. But the question is, which ecosystem services, uh, which ecosystems that actually drive this, um, that drive tourism within, uh, um, within the KZN? So I looked at two aspects. I'm looking at economic contribution and the spatial distribution of these services. So where are they, who's benefiting, how, and what's the economic contribution? So the methods that I've used, so, the methods that I've, uh, that I've attempted to use is the INVEST model. The INVEST model, um, I attended a few conferences and it was mentioned quite a lot. And then at some point it was mentioned that we should, South Africa should move towards using this method as the accepted standardized method. Because as Usmiso was saying, there is no standardized method. Everyone does their own thing. So our results are not really comparable. So I'll say, okay, let's delve into this and let's use the INVEST method to map um, recreational value. So the INVEST method, just briefly, is a tool that explores uh, how changes in ecosystems results in the change in the flow of ecosystem services. And then it um, gives you scenarios of, say, for instance, if in five years a certain ecosystem transforms into something else, what would the change in the flow of ecosystem services provided by the ecosystem, how would that change? So what the, myth, uh, the model, what it does is that it uses a, a simple framework of supply, service, and value. It looks at supply where it asks um, what, what does the ecosystem structure and the process, what do those provide? And then it looks at uh, uh, services, which looks at um, who's benefiting from these services and what are they doing with these goods and these services. And then it looks at the value, which is a combination of social preferences and the economic uh, contribution. The outputs of INVEST are maps because it's a spatially explicit uh, model. So it gives you maps of, say, um, uh, different patterns of where uh, the ecosystems are, where the ecosystem services provided are, the recreational activities or service regulation, I mean, water quality regulation, etc. So it'll give you a map of that. And then it'll also give you a map of the value or to say, okay, if our water treatment is, um, Water treatment is high at, water supply is high at the bioeconomy node that Lizanne mentioned earlier up in, I forgot where, but she said in the morning. So if it's, if it's placed there, um, what is the economic contribution of that specific area? So that's what the model does and that's the output that it gives us. And then within the model, we've got tinier models that are fine-tuned. We've got a recreational model, we've got a, a water quality model, we've got a coastal quality model. So for this specific uh, study, I use the recreational model. What the recreational model does is that it predicts the number of uh, person, days, um, yeah, person days visiting an area per year. So it does this by using uh, natural habitats, accessibility uh, built uh, features, or whatever that um, the model or the user sees fits as factors that drive people to go to a place. So I'll decide on five factors that say, okay, I think it's one, two, three, four, five that uh, affect or influences a visitor or a tourist to go to an area. So it'll look at that. And then it'll go on to a social network networking platform called Flickr. Flickr is an online album. So if you take a picture, it's, the picture is geotagged. And so what the model does is that it uses that as a proxy to say, okay, if 50,000 pictures are taken in Tlufluem Olozi in a year, so we can safely say 50,000 people go there per year. So that's how the model essentially works. So the, uh, the output are maps that show us the current pattern. So currently, this is what, um, this, uh, this is the recreational use of a certain park, a certain reserve. And then it also gives you predictions, like I said earlier, of say, if a certain landscape or habitat changes or a certain um, 
a feature that you've chosen as a predictive variable changes, this is how the flow of these services or this is how it affects people visiting the area. Um, so this is just a table that shows the data requirements uh, for, for, for the model. So when we look at supply, when we're looking at, um, we look at the location, the desired features, your well watch sightings, your, your beaches, et cetera, you'd input that, that's the data you need. And then you'd look at the quality and the environmental conditions that affect, that could affect the recreational value. And the output from there would be just a general map to say these are the activities in this geographical area. And then you'll also have inputs such uh, data, you also need data, data, excuse me, such as your infrastructure, your roads, accessibility, because um, the accessibility to an area could affect people visiting the area. And then visitation rates uh, as well, like I'd said. However, what I forgot to mention was, if you do have the data, the, the Flickr um, proxy comes in when you don't have the empirical data. So that's where that came in. But if you do have the data, then you input your data into that. And essentially, then it calculates, and oh, and sorry, for the value, it'll look at the travel costs, revenue from activities, and these are numbers and values that are accessible that we can find with a bit more probing. And the output is, would be, just like I said, a map that shows you where what is and how much each of the activities is worth. So um, just like with every model, I'm not a modeler, I'm not a GIS person, I was just excited and just uh, saw a challenge. So with using this model, I've experienced a lot of challenges, but the main challenge is that every time I run the model, that's what I get. So something somewhere is going wrong, and for the life of me, I have no idea. I've tried different methods, I've tried different inputs, I've, I've really, yeah, but that's all I get. So at this moment, I don't have any outputs, I don't have any results, I've just got errors. Um, so the problem with Invest is that it's a new tool. I don't have um, predecessors that I can go to and say, so what did you find? How do you do this? Have you found this error? Have you done this? That's my challenge right now is that I, I don't know, there isn't anyone that I can um, talk to and you know, who's used the model and have found joy in the model that can, you, that can guide and say these are the areas, et cetera. And the, another, another problem could be that the model uses a global data set because it's mainly for remote areas, areas that don't have data, et cetera, so it uses a global data set. Uh, that, so you need to be connected to the internet when you're using it because it pulls information from the web, from this global data set. So I think maybe my scale is too small. It could be anything, so that's another challenge. Um, as well as, yeah, I, I really think it requires extensive modeling skills because when these errors come up, it's not even English, it's, it's something else. So if you have the skills for modeling, I think you'd have uh, better luck using the model. But I haven't given up, I'm still gonna try, I'm still gonna put it out there and someone somewhere will, would have used it and help out. So in the meantime, what I do have is uh, the current stats at Kesley Wildlife. I've got visitor numbers, which is how many people go through the gates. I've got financial records of how much money we make through these people that come in the, through the gates, their accommodation, through the activities we provide. So that's what I do have. So what I did was play around with that. Not too much playing. And, what we, and I compared, like I said, Maluti Drakensberg, which is the blue, and HIP, Kluklue, which is the red. So from just looking at that data, we find that over a two year period, we have more visitors, more people going through to HIP compared to MDP. Uh, then if we look at admissions, okay, how much money we make, that's in the millions, so it's two million up to 16 million rands. From in people entering the gates, okay, initially we've got high numbers of people entering, which makes sense that we'd make more money at HIP for people entering through the gates for admissions, that makes sense. Then we have this which is accommodation revenue. So there's more people going to HIP, we're making more money for people going through the gates, but they're not sleeping at HIP. So where are they sleeping? Why are they entering HIP? So for now, my conclusion is that they enter HIP not for the built infrastructure because from probing around, some of our staff mentioned that the accommodation at HIP is not so great, the road leading to HIP is 
not well maintained, but people still go there. We still see influx of people entering the park uh, year after year in their masses and we make that much money. So the conclusion could only be that they're entering for the natural infrastructure, for the biodiversity, for the ecosystem services that are provided by this protected area. They're not going there for the, the, the luxury chalets and uh, all the built infrastructure. So that's why we don't make much money from accommodation. But for, for, for me to say this confidently and conclusively, um, what we still need to do, I still need to do, is maybe do a survey. Go to these parks, ask about uh, the origin of the, river, of the visitors, where did they come from? Because like we saw earlier in the model that it uses travel costs as a proxy to say how much people are willing to pay to go to HIP or go to any of our reserves. So that um, by default can be the cost of a specific service or a specific ecosystem good. So, and um, yeah, and just to find out what are the main drivers of, eco of tourism, because if they're not going there for accommodation and they're not going there for hiking or anything, what are they going for? And that essentially, we, that I can use, that can be used and to incorporate into the study to make conclusive um, uh, deductions and say, yes, people are coming in for the ecosystem services. They do have a high economic value through recreational activities. Also, what I think would be awesome would have, if it was to have historical uh, records. The records that I have now are from 2014 to, to 2016. It would be really great to have historical um, records to say, uh, for instance, maybe if land wasn't as transformed as it was, so people are, um, so now because land is transformed as much as it is, people are trying to find somewhere to run to where it's pristine and it's natural, so maybe people are coming in more because the area Maybe we know we've got less pristine areas and everything else is transformed. So maybe historically when the land wasn't as transformed, maybe we didn't do so well in terms of um, the, the value and the money that we made. And also to enhance this and further just uh, take the message home, a link to ecosystem condition would be really great. So sort of compare the landscape and the habitat types that are found within each of our protected areas. Not to say that any of our protected areas have degraded habitats, they don't. They are all pristine. So, <laughs> so, but if we could have a comparison of that, of saying, okay, if for instance, this grassland at HIP is in less of a pristine condition as compared to um, um, Maluti Drakensberg, we have more people going there as opposed to here, and then we can link that, we can link the value of ecosystem services to ecosystem condition and ecosystem integrity. So, oh yes, thank you, that's it, thank you. <laughs>